It's something that I believe most artists think about when they first start producing material. Whether you're a poet, photographer, painter, musician, or whatever, you see others who have been at it for far longer and it just seems impossible to ever catch up. The distance between a beginner and a master craftsman can seem insurmountable. One will tend to think, well, I might not be appreciated today, but one day I will be, maybe even after I'm dead. Because we hear those stories of great artists discovered after their time has expired. We hear how Vincent van Gogh died having never been recognized for his greatness. We hear about Emily Dickinson only being truly discovered only after having her poems discovered in a dresser drawer by her sister. We hear about outsider artists like Henry Darger who will live their entire life having little to no contact with the mainstream art world. Vivian Meyer, like Emily Dickinson and Henry Darger, is one such artist whose profound and prolific body of work was only recently discovered a little too late. Like Emily Dickinson, Meyer's vast collection of work was discovered after her death and in storage. Unlike Emily Dickinson, who had actually published several poems in her lifetime, there is no evidence that Vivian Meyer had shown any of her photographs to anyone in her lifetime. A quality she would share with Darger, however, unlike Darger, she wasn't some walled-off shut-in. Vivian Meyer is probably one of the most talked about and celebrated photographers to come up in recent years. She's not as famous, well-known, or revered as, say, Annie Leibovitz. However, her popularity and acclaim can be widely attributed to the intrigue surrounding her story and brought to the public eye by way of the Oscar-nominated documentary Finding Vivian Meyer, directed by John Maloof and Charlie Siskel. And that's the difficulty of covering Vivian Meyer. What can be said about her that hasn't already been said? With numerous exposés and a well-known documentary film about her story, Vivian Meyer's tale of discovery has been done to death. But there's a reason why I chose this particular picture instead of one of the other more well-known photos she's taken. It's about what she's done, what she's wearing, what's around her neck, where she's at, and who she's with. Briefly, in a nutshell, I want to talk a little bit about that amazing story that has captivated so many people and won her over and garnered such posthumous fandom. The story begins with a man named John Maloof, a real estate agent and amateur historian that was working on a book at the time. He was going out and buying up storage units for auction, hoping to find some trinkets and photos he could use for his work. Well, one day, he bought up one particular storage unit, and when he went through it, he discovered this huge collection of one person's life. Shoes, buttons, pins, receipts, movie ticket stubs. At first, you might chalk it up to someone having just bought a hoarder's stash, but Maloof also discovered thousands of rolls of undeveloped film. Now, Maloof was no photographer and didn't know much about art. But he did begin to scan these photos into his computer and one day linked his blog account which featured these photos to a Flickr account. He simply asked, are these any good? Eventually, it would go viral. Image after image, people wanted to see more. It appeared as though these pictures were expert level, beautifully shot, with captivating subject matter rarely seen today. Who was this photographer? The storage locker was purchased in 2007, and at that time, Maloof was unable to find any record of Vivian Meyer. It was the name he found scrawled on scraps of paper in some of the luggage he had purchased with the storage unit. Maloof then tracked down more boxes from an abandoned storage garage and amassed a collection of hundreds of thousands of frames shot in New York, Chicago, France, South America, and Asia between the 1950s and 1970s. But it was two years after purchasing the first box that he went to Google and typed in her name and discovered she had died only a few days before. The short text in her obituary led Maloof to discover that she had been working as a nanny for most of her life and thus began the journey in piecing together the details of the mysterious life of Vivian Meyer. Born in 1926, Vivian Meyer bounced around Europe and America until finally settling in the U.S. in 1951, where she landed a job as a nanny in Southampton. She had been toying around with photography a few years before while still living in Europe, 
but it was when she moved back to the U.S. that she purchased her Rotoflex camera that she would eventually become known for. It was with that camera that her style took shape. This twin lens Rolleiflex camera was held inconspicuously at hip height. This made it perfect for a street photographer. Meyer could stand in front of people and look down at her camera without them knowing exactly what she was doing or if she was even taking a photo. Meyer took these mundane moments and made them into something extraordinary. A well-dressed and made-up woman with a pearl necklace waits outside a New York public building with elderly people milling about behind her, either waiting to get into a car or having exited already. A glassy-eyed crying girl is framed under the arm of what could be her parents arguing. A boy uses a pallet as a ladder to look at what could be inside a large box in the middle of the sidewalk. A young man riding horseback under a bridge in the city. She would take the children in her care into the city like this on many occasions, but also into strawberry fields to collect berries, always with her camera around her neck. In recent years, those same children would remember how Vivian would linger about for too long to get just the right shot. Vivian Meyer never married, had no family, no close friends that say they knew her on a personal level, and she had no children of her own. It seems as though the nanny's life allowed her to be with people without being too interconnected with them. She was with them, but not of them. She went to great lengths to distance herself from others to cultivate a lone persona. Meyer would speak in an accent that many people believed to be contrived. No one could quite place where she was from or what that accent was exactly. She claimed to be from France, but sometimes the accent would drop off completely. Shop owners and film processors would never get her real name and said she passed off with different names all around town. When asked what she did for a living, she would say, I'm a sort of spy. And judging from her photos, in a way, she was in fact a spy. When employed, she demanded padlocks be put on her door and no one would be allowed in. She was fiercely private, but her personal space had connected mounds of newspapers, leaflets, and collections of trinkets over the years. Her stash of papers and periodicals had grown so enormous that one of her employers had to put up steel braces under the floor below to support the boards sagging from the weight of her collection. It seems as though she valued her privacy as well as her freedom, choosing her job not out of the love she had for children, but for the love of what the job afforded her to see and the freedom it enabled her to have. She was never bound to anyone in particular and could walk away at any time. Later on in life, Meyer switched to color photography, but this wasn't the only switch. Her color photos saw people creeping out of her pictures while more abstract images crept in. She began photographing her tax documents, newspapers, empty rolls of film, and found objects. Eventually, financial stress would put a hold on Meyer processing her images. Rolls upon rolls of film would go untouched. Vivian Meyer put down her camera and placed most of her things in storage while she tried to keep her head above water. She bounced in and out of homelessness until a family she used to work for heard of her instability and came together to get her a studio apartment. With dwindling finances and meager means, her storage locker became forgotten until it was finally purchased by John Maloof in 2007 when it went up for auction. At no time in Vivian Meyer's life did she try and seek out a job in photography, nor did she try and gain recognition for her work. She never showed her photos to the children or adults she worked for. In fact, when her work became public, those that knew her never knew about the mountain of photos she had accumulated. They knew she took pictures, since she was always with a camera, but they never saw what she shot or just how good it was. And that's probably the most fascinating part of this whole story. Yes, her path to discovery is in itself a story worth telling, but it's difficult for most of us to wrap our heads around why someone so passionate about one thing and who could be so great at it would not want to share it with the rest of the world, not only for those around her. She didn't shoot for likes and she didn't shoot for comments. She didn't make pictures for ad revenue. She didn't photograph for sponsorship. Not once did she say, hit the bell and subscribe. She never asked anyone to join her Patreon so she could continue her work. Some people exist to create off the bliss of creation itself, and these days that is a complete foreign concept to some people. And with that, I chose the photo for this because you can see how she dressed for herself. 
It was utilitarian, and it served a function. There was no sense of fashion, it simply suited her. She's also in the city, which seemed like her element and her muse, as well as in the company of a little girl that could only be one of the children she had been tasked to care for. When I see this image, I imagine that the little girl's parents probably didn't know that she was in the city, but Vivian wanted to go there to shoot. And even though the frame is a tad off kilter, you can see that Vivian is cognizant of the framing in the shot. The metal shelving at the bottom of the frame slightly reflects their figures down and out of frame. There's a reflection in the glass that seems to only fall on Meyer's face, highlighting her cheek in shadow and the side of her nose. The city behind her is a familiar backdrop as it appears in many of Meyer's shots. The child by her side has an expression on her face as if she's used to this type of thing. In 2008, Vivian Meyer fell on a patch of ice, hitting her head. This was in downtown Chicago. Still alive while John Maloof was trying to find out who she was. Although she was expected to make a full recovery, her health declined and she was placed in a nursing home. She died shortly after, leaving behind over 150,000 photographs for the public to eagerly anticipate discovering on their own.